So the gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And this is what it says. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take away the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Okay, so what's going on here? Let's walk through it and make a few points to put it in context. Number one, notice where Jesus is. The geography matters here. He's in the district of Tyre and Sidon. These were Gentile territories that were to the north of what we consider the Holy Land today, in the realm known as Phoenicia. So they're predominantly Gentile context. And it is in that geographical area that a Gentile woman, a Canaanite woman, comes to him and asks him to deliver her daughter from demonic possession, right? Which was something that was very frequent, especially in the pagan territories. Now, um, what does it mean to call her a Canaanite woman? Well, if you recall, you go back to the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 15, it actually says that Sidon, that name Sidon, which became a name for the territory, was a firstborn son, the firstborn son of Canaan, right? Who uh, was the great ancestor in the book of Genesis of many of the enemies of Israel, uh, chief among them, the Canaanites, the people who lived in the land of Canaan, in the Holy Land, before the Israelites came in and conquered them and dwelled in the land at the time of Joshua and Judges. Okay, so this woman isn't just a Gentile. She isn't even just a pagan. She belongs to the, the Canaanites, which of all the pagan peoples were the most um, immersed, not just in idolatry, but in immorality, and had a history for being the enemies of Israel, right? At war constantly with Israel in the Old Testament. If you want an example of the way in which the Canaanites as a people symbolized wickedness to the people of Israel. You can read the book of Wisdom, chapter 12, and it just goes through all the various sins and immoralities that were practiced by the Canaanites, especially at the time of Joshua and Judges. Uh, not only did they worship false gods, but they sacrificed their children to demons. I mean, it, it was bad. So the Canaanites were uh, almost the living symbol of a wicked people to the people of Israel. And yet this woman, who is a Gentile and is a Canaanite, comes up to Jesus and says, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. All right. Now, what's interesting about that approach, this shows you first and foremost, this is no ordinary Canaanite, right? She's coming to Jesus and begging him for mercy and using the title, the royal title, son of David, when she is addressing him, honoring him in a sense as king, as Messiah, as the ruler of the people of Israel which is a lot more than Jesus got from some of his contemporaries living in the Holy Land. Many of them rejected him. But this Canaanite woman recognizes him. Uh, also, I might just note here that the expression, have mercy on me, Lord, eleison me kyrie in Greek, eleison me kyrie, is where we get kyrie eleison from in the Mass. When we say kyrie eleison, that expression, although most people think it's Latin, is actually Greek, and it's from the New Testament, right? So this is um, a plea for mercy. Now, how does Jesus respond to this extraordinary plea and this honor that the woman gives him? He ignores her. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't answer her a word, right? Now, that is very mysterious. And frankly, 
kind of rude, right? I mean, it comes off as if he's being rude to her. If someone came up to you and gave you a title of honor and begged you for mercy, would you not say anything? What is Jesus up to here? Now, notice though, on the other hand, Jesus doesn't send her away, okay? The disciples, when they encounter her, say, Lord, please send her away. She's crying after us. In other words, she's annoying, right? They're getting aggravated by her. They're probably, frankly, a little uncomfortable with her, given the fact that she is obviously a Gentile and a Canaanite, and she's coming and supplicating Jesus for mercy. Jesus, notice, on the one hand, he ignores her, which appears to be rude. It appears to be, like, dismissive. On the other hand, he doesn't send her away. He just sits there silent. And then when the apostles ask him to send her away, he responds with a mysterious saying. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you look at that in context, this has to do with the fact that as the Messiah, Jesus is sent on his mission during his earthly life, during his public ministry. He is sent first and foremost and only, as he says here, to the house of Israel, right? So although Jesus would go into foreign territories, and on occasion he does encounter non-Israelites, like the uh, Gerasene demoniac, who's clearly a pagan, his mission, the people he goes to, the people he seeks after, are what he calls the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, I could go into so much about this. I did a whole, a whole dissertation on this whole question of the ten lost tribes of Israel and of the descendants of the northern kingdom, which were called Israelites, um, who had been exiled and scattered since the time of Assyria uh, in the 8th century BC, around 722 BC. The northern ten tribes of Israel uh, were forcibly deported by the Assyrians. They were scattered among the nations, and then the Assyrians settled Gentile peoples in the northern kingdom. Those were the ancestors of the uh, of the Samaritans. Um, so there was an expectation in Judaism at the time of Jesus that one day the ten lost tribes of Israel would be gathered back into the promised land. They would be brought back into the promised land at the time of the Messiah. And that one of the jobs of the Messiah would be to gather the lost tribes of Israel so that all twelve tribes would be reunited under one king and then the kingdom of God would be established on earth. So when Jesus says, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, we got to be clear here. Uh, most of us think he means I was sent only to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. And that's partially correct. But what he really means is, although I'm in Gentile territory, I'll, in the northern territories, Galilee, Tyre, Sidon, my mission is to gather the lost tribes of Israel. My mission is to gather the scattered sheep, the remnants, so to speak, of those northern Israelites, of which there were some still living in his day, like Anna, of the tribe of Asher. She was a prophetess down in the temple. She's not technically speaking a Jew. In other words, she's not descended from the southern tribes of Judah. She's a northerner. She's an Israelite from one of the tribes of Israel. So Jesus uses this image of the scattered sheep of Israel to describe his mission. And we'll see this elsewhere in the New Testament. Um, if you read all the way to the end of the Gospel of Matthew, after the resurrection, Jesus is going to tell the apostles, now go to all nations, right? Preach the good news to all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the Great Commission. But he doesn't send them to the Gentiles until after the resurrection because there's an order to salvation history. As St. Paul says in the letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. In other words, God's message of salvation is first given to his chosen people and then through them, it goes out to all the nations of the world after the resurrection. So basically what Jesus is saying here is, I wasn't sent to the Gentiles during my earthly ministry. Now, how does the woman respond? Well, she could have just gone away dejected. I mean, he's already ignored her and then said he was only sent to Israelites. But instead, she persists. And it says she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. So she takes it up a notch. She kneels before him. And it's interesting here, the Greek expression is proskuneo. We've seen this elsewhere in the Gospel of Matthew when the apostles proskuneo before Jesus. Uh, but notice the English translation here is different. When the apostles proskuneo, when they fall down on their knees before Jesus, the English translation says they worshiped him. When the 
the Gentile woman proskuneos, uh, the English translation says she knelt before him. Right? So it's ambiguous. You could say here, but you could translate it, giving everything else in Matthew, that she worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. Now, either way, however you translate it, she clearly venerates him and begs him as Lord to help her and to help her daughter. Now, what does Jesus say to that? He still resists and says, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now, in ancient times, as well as today, this would be an insult. To call someone a dog would be an insult, or to compare someone to a dog would be an insult. You can see this elsewhere in the New Testament. For example, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul is talking about his opponents, and he says, beware of the dogs, right? These were the ones who were insisting that circumcision was necessary for salvation. Uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 15, it says that outside the, the heavenly Jerusalem are the dogs. It's a way of referring to people who are sinners, who are unclean. And in this context, what Jesus is doing is giving a kind of parable in which the children represent the Israelites and the dogs represent the unclean Gentiles. So what Jesus is saying here is, it's not right to take the food of the children, namely the Israelites, and feed it to the dogs, namely the Gentiles, right? And, and if you think about this, if you have a dog in your house, you know what this means, right? You don't take the food off the table, hopefully you don't, and, and give it to the, the family pet instead of feeding your children. There's an order even within the family, right? Children eat first, and then the dogs would eat the scraps that were left over. That was customary in ancient Israel. If you had any scraps left over, well, then you give it to the dogs. So Jesus is saying this is out of order. You don't take the children's food and give it to the dogs. You don't take the salvation that's supposed to come to Israel first and give it first to the Gentiles. So how does the woman respond? Again, she persists. She's not going anywhere until she gets some healing for her daughter. So she flips it around and says to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And that's the breaking point. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. At that moment, she's healed. So, um, what's going on in this story? Well, let me give a, a little clue here, two things. First, let's go back to the Old Testament.